Hey everybody, Casey Ferris here. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on YouTube and I'm here with my friend, Jason. How's it going, man? Good, what's going on everybody? Great to be here. Thanks for uh, having me on. Really yeah. Excited about this. Uh -huh. uh, man, it's so good to uh, to hang out with you and to just talk uh, audio nerd stuff. We've been we've been talking a little bit before we started recording, and um, I'm I'm so so excited for Resolve 18. And so I thought it would be great to kind of bring you on, since you're a little bit more into the Fairlight side of things, a little bit more of an audio nerd than I am, because I know people are are craving like what's the what's the audio stuff, you know? And I'm like, you know. I need some help. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Love me audio, man. I, I try and dig in there as quick as I can, you know, see what's new. And there's some great stuff there that uh, that we're going to take a look at here. So, yeah, definitely excited about it. Yeah. So I think uh, I, I just wanted to kind of go over some of um, some of the new features from Resolve 18 when it comes to the Fairlight page, because I know they made a lot of um, kind of just quality of life updates. And uh, I'm really excited to jump into that. A lot of it, some of it stuff that's like, oh, well, didn't it always do that? Wasn't that a thing? But um, right. but, but yeah. So why don't we start out with like, what are some of your favorite uh, features? What's one of your favorite features of, uh, of Resolve that they just kind of updated? Yeah, so moving into uh, 18 here, they uh, they added some really convenient features into the EQ here. And oh. EQ is like a huge part of audio in general because it can really help sculpt your sound. It can get rid of harsh sounds and almost every microphone can really you know benefit from some EQ work. You might not need a ton, but it always helps, you know? And what I've noticed is like the, the cheaper your microphone or a lot of lav mics and stuff like, they could really benefit from some EQ and it could just help clean it up. So um, that's one that I'm really excited about um, taking a look at because there's some great things that are going to make it easy for everybody out there to kind of get started. Even if you have no clue what's going on, it looks like, you know, some crazy spaceship when you open the EQ. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a, li a little intimidating, you know, but um, at least they've given you some places to start now, which is kind of cool as well as a couple of new features. In yeah. There, so. That's awesome. Well, yeah. um, I have uh, I have my screen recording and stuff going, so uh, maybe you can kind of walk us through some of the some of the exciting things here. Yeah, so let's check it out. All right. So to get to the EQ, it's uh, in the mixer. Open your mixer and then head on over to the EQ. And if you just double, well, actually, before you even double click it, one of the cool things you could just turn it on and off by just clicking once on it. Oh, so you click mm -hmm. once on it, turns it off and on, like super easy. You know, just a little toggle there. So that's convenient because you don't have to actually open the EQ to see like a before and after of the changes that you might be making. Yeah, so that's, that's awesome. I'm, that's really I'm nice. That. I mean, that, that seems like a, a little thing, but I would want to just turn it off and on and I'd have to open this thing up and like, and do it this way, which is just, you know, exactly not that big of a deal, but like when you do it 50 times, it's like, okay, <laughs> come on. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. That's, and that's one of those quality of life things that you're talking about. You know, it just makes it quicker and easier and it like kind of takes out a step almost, it feels like, you know? Yeah, so, for sure. So that's one thing right there. And then, uh, so in the EQ here, they never provided any kind of like preset or anywhere for you to start with. So if you click on this little drop down at the top left here, you see we've got a couple presets in there now. Oh, see? And yeah, so I don't know why these weren't in there right from the get-go, at least something, you know, like give me something here. But um, now we've at least got a place where anybody can start with something here in the EQ instead of just, you know, spinning knobs and dials and, and not know what's going on. Yeah. So these will give you at least somewhere to start. And, uh, you know, I, I haven't really tried them out a ton. I've tried them a little bit and like they, they make an improvement, you know, they, they work pretty good. And I would expect that. I mean, Blackmagic has awesome people over there, you know, working on all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, if you have no clue about EQ, you don't know anything about it. Maybe you don't even want to know anything about it. Just go in there and click one of those presets and see what it sounds like, you know, give a little, give yourself a little before and after. And, um, at least it's, it's going to make an improvement. I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure. I mean, can't guarantee it, but, um, it's probably going to help a little bit and, and, uh, you know, just help that audio sound a little bit sweeter for you. Yeah, that's that's really nice to have those uh, those presets. I mean, especially if you're not super familiar with how the, the EQ works and everything. Um, man, I learn a lot just by going through a couple of presets sometimes uh, for yeah. for a tool and just say, oh, well, you know, like even something like this, it's like, OK, what does a female lav mic fixer do versus a male, you know, like. Right. Why, why are they different? You know, you can kind of get into all of those little uh, details and kind of reverse engineer them, you know, which I think is so yeah. cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a big help, you know, and 
I mean, you'll have, you'll see, you'll see the difference or hear the difference, uh, you know, between like the male and female ones or whatever, because our voices live in kind of different frequencies, you know? So by adjusting those different frequencies, you're going to sculpt the sound and, and uh, make it the way you want or take things that sound harsh out. Um, that's mostly what you do is take out harsh stuff, you know, with the EQ. So yeah, great, yeah. great, uh, great that they added the presets in there. And now at least you got a few that you can try out and uh, see, see how it works, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So good. So good. Um, all right. So uh, what else do we have here in the Fairlight page? There's one more thing with the EQ. If you want to take oh. a look real quick to help you adjust it real quick. Um, when you're adjusting the points, so maybe you know a little bit about EQ, you know how to kind of drag one of your points up and, you know, sweep it around a little bit back and forth. They've, uh, they've added the ability to just change the shape of that curve there using your middle mouse wheel. So oh. that's pretty mm -hmm. sweet because it, it saves you some time. You don't have to go down to the Q factor down, uh, you know, below the, the, the graph there, which is what you used to have to do. Yeah, you used to have to grab that dial and, and uh, work with that a little bit. So it's a, again, a quality of life thing. It just kind of speeds up your workflow a little bit, helps you find a specific frequency where you might be having some problems. And, you know, usually you'll find it with a, a real sharp point, kind of like you have there. And then you might want to widen out that, that curve a little bit just to kind of grab some frequencies on either side. Once you hear something that doesn't sound good. Mm -hmm. And then once you find those points, you can drop it down and it, it helps take out, you know, any of those harsh sounds that you might be hearing in there. It's nice because it's quick. It's easy. And again, just a quality of life thing, make, make editing a little bit quicker there. So, so that's the last cool thing there in, uh, in the EQ that, uh, that I'm pretty excited about. Yeah. That's, uh, I, when I, when I saw that, I, I kind of freaked out too, even though like, you know, again, I'm not like a super audio nerd, but I've used a little bit of EQs and, uh, in other apps and stuff. And like, it seems like, yeah, usually you can roll with this, the scroll wheel and, and, you know, move the Q factor and stuff. So I'm excited that they, they built that in. That's neat. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, one of the other cool uh, things that got updated is some things in the dynamics. Dynamics are huge. Uh, the reason you want to use dynamics, if you're not familiar with them at all, is that it kind of helps even out your audio a little bit, right? So some parts of our audio, you know, they may be really loud and other parts might be really quiet. Mm -hmm. Well, the dynamics is going to help kind of close the gap between the two. So if somebody's watching your video, they don't have to, you know, ride, ride the remote control volume. Oh, yeah. it's too quiet. I'm turning it up, turning it down. So that's kind of generally what Dynamics is going to help you do with your audio. So they did add a couple pretty cool new uh, features here. One is just the way that you see what is going on inside uh, the Dynamics here with, with the graphic. Um, I don't know. I'm going to call it the graphic thing. So to find the Dynamics, again, make sure you're in Fairlight and you have the mixer open. And towards the top here, you'll see Dynamics. And you can just double click on it. That's going to go ahead and open it up for you. Um, one quick thing too, if you single clicked on it, it would turn it on and off just like it does with the EQ. Oh, so yeah. a little, little quick tip there for you, which nice. is, uh, is pretty sweet. So one of the things I really like that they did was they changed the way you graphically see what is going on with your dynamics. So that graph that's right in the middle at the top, as we're playing through here, you can see that, that yellow line kind of oh, zipping yeah. back and forth there. That's telling us where our audio is living based on, you know, the current levels and stuff that it's set at in our track. Wow. So that's great because then if we go and, for example, turn on the compressor, we can kind of see where things are happening. So right now we can see it's below our, our threshold line, which is that blue line. So the compressor is not actually doing anything. Mm -hmm. So if you grab the, uh, the threshold there down in the compressor and you brought that back to the left, now you can see we're getting close to where it's going to actually start affecting that track. Oh, yeah. So it's just nice to have the ability to kind of see visually what's going on with the audio instead of having to watch the the meters you know just to the right there and kind of see what they're doing and and you know work with it that way it's it's pretty cool to be able to just see it right here see what's going on you know yeah man that's that is huge because i mean normally like when you're setting a compressor or when you're setting the threshold for the compressor it's like if, if you don't have this you're basically just like looking over at this um, line right here and trying to see like, okay, when does this start kind of pushing it down, you know, and then you're kind of right. setting your threshold with that. And it's kind of just not the most intuitive thing, you know? And so to have right. like a real time readout of where this is coming from. So helpful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, hundred percent agree with that. It's uh, it makes it easier, especially if you don't even know the tool that well, you don't understand quite what you're looking at being able to see it like this 
just at least I think it helps make it a little bit clearer, you know? Yeah, for sure. So a couple other tools that they added, um, we're sticking with the compressor here. Um, if you look in the little knobs and buttons and dials down there, they've added uh, one called a knee. So a knee is, uh, it's basically going to affect like the angle at which the compressor starts. So if you look at the graph uh, up at the top there and right where, yeah, right there, right where that little uh, angle happens. Before we had the knee, it was just, you know, a hard change there. Um, but now that we have the knee, that allows you to kind of ease into the compressor. That sharp point there, it kind of rounds out a little bit, right? Yeah. So how you know how much are you going to notice it? You know, in your audio when you're playing with it. Again, it's probably something that's pretty subtle, unless you have, uh, you know, unless you're compressing a lot, um, where that compressor is kicking in a lot and quick. But you know, it's a lot of this audio stuff, it's little things that add up, you know, to make a big difference as a whole. Yeah. So being able to kind of just ease into the compression can make a big difference, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'd be anxious to hear a, like a before and after, you know, of, of what something sounds like when it's really compressed without the knee and then one with kind of a softer knee. Oh, funny you mentioned that. I got some videos in the works on, uh, on oh, some of that. Oh, baby. So, hey, maybe, maybe stay tuned, you know? See, that's... <laughs> That's what might I'm have a video about sure that. Sure would right? be great if somebody made one of those videos. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. If there was an audio guy out here. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One other tool there in the uh, dynamics um, is that they added a mix knob. Ooh. So the mix, what that's going to do is kind of blend your compressor back into the original signal a little bit. Mm. And maybe the easiest way to understand it is that it also works on other effects. So if you had an effect like, say, uh, echo, delay, reverb, something like that, uh, you could apply like the full effect where it's going to, you know, have a big impact. It, you know, it's probably going to sound like too much. Yeah. Um, well, you can blend it back or or it's almost like an opacity with video or something. You, yeah. know, you kind of blend them together and create a nice balance between the effect and your original audio, you know, so it's not too much because you don't want to overdo it. You yeah. know, that's so, that's so it's nice to have that option. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like a master um, strength kind of knob, you know. Right. Oh, exactly. so good. I know I use that like with color correction all the time. It's like, you know, you go way too far on the color and then you just kind of dial it back, you know, as a whole. Um, yeah. There's also, uh, yeah, also use that infusion quite a bit. Like, man, that's so cool to have that kind of um, thing on an effect like a compressor. It's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's cool because like with audio, it's the same kind of thing. Like you mentioned with color grain, it's like sometimes you almost want to overdo it so you can hear it hear mm -hmm. what it's doing and then you want to back it off so you almost don't notice it yeah you know that's the thing with audio it's got to be subtle because if it's too much it's just it's standing out like a sore thumb, thumb you know yes. whether, yeah whether it's an effect whether it's compression whatever you know it's it subtle subtle is the key and um i mean it's hard to get across on youtube sometimes you know you need like some good headphones or something mm -hmm. to, to hear it but subtle subtle go easy with the hand you know yeah back for down, sure yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. That's uh, that's what I tell people with with color and effects and designs and titles and transitions and everything. It's like subtle is almost always better, you know, yeah. because you you can ride that that line between like effective and cheesy, <laughs> right, like, right, pretty pretty easily. And I know sometimes, it, especially with audio, it's like you're in there working and you're like, oh man, that sounds good, and like you sit with it so long and you get used to like the subtlety of it that. Yeah, I'm just gonna crank that up a little bit, you know. Yeah. So it's almost good sometimes to step away for a minute, and then come back and be, you know, hear it again, or or even with like color grading to look at it again and be like, well, eh, maybe it was a little heavy handed on that, you know. Yeah. And then tone it back a little bit. Yeah. So one thing that I was excited about is uh, the way that they're kind of handling buses and tracks and stuff now. Um, so th there were some updates with that. You want to give us a little little bit of an insight on that? Sure. So with the buses and tracks, uh, we've got the ability or more flexibility, I should say, to move them around. So we've always been able to easily and quickly move the tracks around um, in Fairlight. So if you open up index, uh, you see we've got all our tracks listed here. And we've always had the ability to just grab a track, click on it, hold and drag it you know, into a new location if we wanted to shuffle our tracks a little bit. Sure. But the, the uh, enhancement or, or the update uh, includes the ability to move the buses mm. uh, back and forth, which appear, I think, below. Oh, there you go. The yeah. buses. Yeah. <laughs> I already had this and, moved around because I was playing with it. But yeah, normally the buses yeah. are. So you can move the buses up, you know, closer to the tracks. You can move the yeah. tracks down into where the buses usually were. 
Um, and that line that you see towards the bottom there, that is a separator. So if you see where that line is, anything below it, mm -hmm. if we uh, jump over to the mixer real quick, you'll kind of see where, yeah, that line right there. So anything below that line in our index is going to be on the right-hand side of kind of that, you know, shadow area or whatever um, in our mixer. Oh boy, where did it? Oh, there it is. It's just like perfectly blended in. We lost it. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So, so it just gives you the ability to kind of rearrange stuff, move things around. For me, I don't use a ton of tracks most of the time, unless, uh, you know, I'm putting a lot of sound effects on something, but it's just nice to have the option and the flexibility yeah. to quickly move things around uh, like this here in Fairlight with your audio tracks. And honestly, I wish they would do that with the video tracks too. I don't know why oh, they man. don't, but I mean. Yeah, it's crazy. Like you can't. You, there's no way to <laughs> to move stuff around with the video tracks. You have to. You still have to right click and say move track down, move track up, that kind of thing. Yeah, that still just little... seems like yeah, man. Like I'm ready for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, how often we're all moving video tracks up and down, right? Yeah. You think it would be easy enough to just kind of incorporate this tool uh, over into the edit page? There. I'm sure. I'm sure it's all kinds of complicated for all kinds of reasons. You know. Yep. But. Yep. But it's easy, so, so, easy to complain about it as an end user. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. When you don't have to do the work to figure exactly, it out. Exactly. Right? Yeah. 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 So, so that's nice. Some flexibility that uh, that we get there. Again, quality of life, ease of life, kind of just while you're editing, moving stuff around, and and uh, just really helps out. So, yeah. So, tell me about flex buses. What What is a flex bus for anybody who doesn't know? I mean, I totally know. Of course. But, right. um, just for like you know, maybe if somebody wasn't paying attention. Right, right. So in case you weren't paying attention in class, buses are, <laughs> we've got we've got what we call, what they call flex bus now, or uh, I think as I've called it in some of my videos, flexi bus, which I realized the other day, there's no I after. Oh, <laughs> so, oh I've done that so many times. So kind of stuff. whatever, <laughs> flex bus, flexi bus, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so basically the, the way the setup works now with buses is that a bus can work for anything you can route you know any kind of track to it any kind of auxiliary to it um it could be a main out you know from davinci resolve you've got lots of options on what you can do with those buses so you see here we can just add in as many buses as we want um you know and you can change the format of them to any one of the options there now it's it's super flexible and you can have a ton of them i don't know like 3000 or something. Wow. What it used to be was a more defined uh, bus system, which now they call it the legacy busing system or fixed bus. So you, if you wanted to use like an auxiliary track for something, or maybe you had an auxiliary coming into your, your computer or resolve, um, it had to be a dedicated bus that was only for auxiliaries. Oh. If you wanted a new uh, main out from, you know, your project, you had to create one that was a bus that was a specific main out bus. Mm. So you had specific categories of buses that you used to have to use. Um, or if you had all your vocal tracks, you wanted it to go to a bus, it had to be like a subgroup bus. Yeah. Where So you used to have to divide it up like that. They didn't have uh, a ton of um, options as far as how many buses you could have. Whereas now with the, the flex bus system, they have, uh, you know, a ton of buses you can have i think thousands or whatever something crazy wow um and the buses can be used for whatever you want you're not limited by a specific type or a specific use for mm. the particular bus so the feature that they added in uh, and the flexi buses flex bus oh flexi -bus, almost almost flexi -bus. did it <laughs> it's, been, it's, it's been around for um a little while um it, that part's not brand new but what's new is being able to upgrade any of your older projects from the fixed bus setup to the new flex bus uh, system. And it's pretty easy. You know, a lot of times in the past, you had to set whether you wanted to go with the fixed bus or the newer, you know, flex bus mm -hmm. setup. You had to set it before you even brought any media into your project. Otherwise, oh, you're kind of locked into, um, you know, your, your setting that you had. There. Yeah. Kind of like the frame rates thing on the edit page. Yes, that's, yes, that that's used a to good drive time. me nuts. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Especially as a photographer before I really understood the frame rates. That yeah, was, yeah. That was challenging. <laughs> yeah. But so now you can, you know, if, if you go back to an old project, um, you can just open that old project in, in Resolve 18 here and go in, uh, the I believe it's the project settings. You can just uncheck 
the fixed bus uh, setting and it'll it'll ask you to to convert it for you so that'd be in projects so i think it's in yeah project settings and then uh, under fairlight you're already in the flex bus system yeah. but if you were not that would be checked on and uh, you would have the option to uncheck it and okay. then it would just ask you if you want to up upgrade or convert to the new flex bus system and it only takes seconds to update everything and all your buses stay intact everything is good i think it just you know updates to the new buses and and allows you to use them for more things if you wanted to man so a handy feature if you use buses a lot or if you are working with older projects that you want to you know uh update the busing system or whatever so yeah yeah, More that's, cool yeah, that's going to be, I know, there. make a lot of people happy who have uh, done a lot of audio work, you know, over the last couple of years in Fairlight. Um, yeah. That'll be great. Yeah, it's nice. I mean, I think they're hopefully moving towards adding in some of the tools that like a, a, a dedicated DAW might have, you know, because mm -hmm. um, there's some things in there that, you know, maybe might be lacking still, but they're making great strides with all the updates that they're making. And I feel like eventually it's going to get there. I mean, it's got a lot of the pieces, you know of um some of those dedicated doll programs so we'll see we'll see what's in store but uh i'll definitely be on top of it whenever stuff comes out yeah man so if people want to get a little bit deeper into fairlight and the audio nerd sort of things um where can they find you and what kind of uh what kind of things you got in store for your uh your channel yeah so uh you can always stop by my youtube channel it's uh jason yudlowski and uh, you just search me you'll, you'll find me um i've got tons of audio videos, um, everything from going through all the effects that are in Fairlight. I did a deep dive on like almost every single effect, um, just kind of checking them out and, and just kind of helping you understand what does what and why. Uh, I also got lots of other kind of just general audio videos that'll help you get better sound in audio because audio is so important in your videos. You know, if, if it sounds like junk, nobody wants to watch it, no matter how good it looks, you know? Yeah, that's so, so true. Yeah, so I got a lot of a lot of audio videos because I love that stuff. Um, and then talk about other Resolve stuff too. That's fun and and uh, a lot of stuff geared towards beginners, but a little bit of uh, intermediate stuff there too. Um, I kind of you know find a lot of it fun, fascinating, awesome. So you know I'm always uh, learning new stuff myself, sharing it with yeah. everybody out there and, and everything. So yeah, that's uh, that's where you can find me and hopefully learn some good things. Yeah, man, that's awesome. Um, you also have some uh, EQ presets, isn't that isn't that right? Yeah. So, uh, so you get in there and you try out those uh, presets that they put in there, and you're like, okay, these are cool, but I uh, want some more samples that I could look at or things to try, but I'm not really sure where to go. I watched Jay's EQ crash course, and uh, I still don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> I do have uh, some EQ presets. I got Pack One out now. Um, it's in my Shopify store. You can check that out if you want. Um, and then I'm working on a Pack Two. So Ooh. pack one's kind of like a, you know, a general overall EQ that you would apply to, you, you know, your whole clip. Pack two is going to be more of like a modifier pack, you know, say I want, I want some more bass in there, but I don't know what frequency range that's in. How do I do that? Um, or, you know, I need a little more clarity in my audio. What frequency range do I do? Yeah, to do that? yeah. So pack two is going to kind of be more like that kind of stuff, specific, um, targeting specific areas of, of the EQ. So wow. I'll put together a video on that coming out here soon uh, in the near future. Um, so if you're interested in that, you can check that out too. Awesome. So guys, if you have not subscribed to Jason's channel, make sure to go and do that, especially if you're into the audio thing. And uh, we'll definitely make sure to put links to uh, the channel down below, as well as those EQ presets. Uh, Jason, thank you so much for hanging out with me, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much for uh, having me on and uh, doing this little little Zoom here, checking out some Fairlight stuff. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's yeah, it's great to uh, this is fun stuff. together here and uh, learn learn me a little audio. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Would you like to do an awkward ending with me? Uh, absolutely, would love to. Would love to. Oh, I forgot. I have to tell you a super big secret. Ooh, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Here it is.